Hello, welcome to um, the first uh, train spotting movie review. If I end up seeing the sequel, I will probably do a review for that movie as well. Now, train spotting is a 1996 British movie, well, more or less Scottish, really, because it's set in Edinburgh, and is directed by Danny Boyle, who did Slumdog Millionaire and a few other movies later on down the track, and is returning to do the sequel of the movie Train Spotting 2, which has a advanced screening event on next Friday, which I may or may not end up going to it. It depends on if anyone I know will go along with me if they feel like it. Anyway, I was re-watching Trainspotting for the second time, the original Trainspotting, that is, for the second time ever, yesterday that I recently got on DVD. I thought I'd give it another try. Because the first time I saw the movie, I didn't really think very much of it. Maybe it was the fact because of one particular scene, which I'm going to mention to you straight away now, which probably lots of people don't do in reviews. They don't tend to jump to a specific scene first. They probably talk a bit more about the storyline and the plot. Anyway, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, more or less, the scene where a woman is yelling out loud and crying in tears and they're wondering they're probably wondering what's going on like Ewan McGregor's character and Johnny Lee Miller the character they're probably thinking what's happening and anyway they're going to where the baby Scott is and they find a dead body of the baby which later you see in another quite bizarre scene later on where Ewan McGregor is his character Mark Renton is in his bedroom, like, uh, detoxing or hallucinating, and he sees that baby crawling on the ceiling, and like it's falling onto his body, which is a particularly disturbing and bizarre scene. And the death scene is kind of disturbing as well. That's p the reason why I didn't particularly like this movie at first. But it grew on me the second time I watched it, and I found the movie the second time very entertaining. I do want to say, I wish the movie was a little, little bit longer, though. It only ran for about the usual length of movies, 80 to 90 minutes long. I wish it could have had another 10 minutes longer, or at least ran two hours. Because it actually is a good movie, regardless of that. It does have some humour, some disturbing scenes, which I mostly just mention. Now onto the subject matter. What is Transporting all about, really? Well, it's about these losers, liars and psychos in Edinburgh, in Scotland, who basically are, addict, are heroin addicts and addicted to drugs. So you basically see these losers, like, um, or these, I shouldn't really say losers, but these sort of people who are addicted to bad, uh, addictive drugs... Um, anyway, uh, basically, you shooting up, and you see, like, scenes of, like, needles in arms and shooting up heroin. Now, I'm not condoning drugs at all. I think drugs are very terrible, and I would never do an illegal drug ever in my life. I hate drugs whatsoever. Now, that's hard. You're probably thinking, why do I like this movie so much? It's not so much the drug scenes. They are kind of interesting, though, but... It's more or less the characters are kind of cool. No, I know they kind of do bad things in life, but they are kind of cool in other ways as well, I must admit. And there's a pretty funny scene where I kind of giggled where Spud's character, oh my god, John Roman's character, and his mum, she wants to clean his bed sheets or something, and she lifts it up and all this shit flies onto their face. Now, I thought that scene was pretty fucking hilarious. I actually laughed. It was kind of disturbingly funny, but I thought it was pretty fucking funny. So, and I really liked Kelly McDonald's acting in the movie. Ewan Bremer was a cool character, was Spud. Ewan McGregor's character as Mark Renton, the main heroin actor character. Yes, there's a few others. Um, 
who did I not mention? Robert Carlyle as a non-junkie character or drug addict character, Begbie. I thought he was pretty cool as well. Um, and he just did a... Ter they all just did a terrific job. And Kelly MacDonald as uh, Mark Renton's girlfriend was pretty cool. And the last thing I want to say about this movie is the soundtrack and some of the songs are absolutely great. There was Lou Reed's Perfect Day, which I thought was a brilliant song, and I absolutely loved it. And I also want to say I love this movie, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the sequel is like. I want to give it a big 10 out of 10. And that's my review for The First Train Spotting. Until next time, enjoy.